Martin here, your managing broker with Amped Realty in Louisville, Kentucky. And I appreciate you stopping by my, I guess it would be a vlog, video log versus a blog. Blog is just typing. Anyway, I don't know why that just hit me now. Um, but anyway, I, I appreciate you stopping by on this Tuesday, our, our Tuesday Talks with 12, or as affectionately I call them, uh, T3, as we are uh, hitting the real estate market and your questions. And um, I've got JC helping me out today again, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, appraisals. And I know, I think JC, uh, we talked a little bit prior to, and he had a couple of questions. So uh, let's let's let people kind of hear our thoughts. JC, what are you what are you thinking about as far as appraisals go? Yeah, this to start it off. Uh, first question um, I have is why is it important to get a home uh, appraisal in the first place? Well, you know, again, on some of those questions, uh, appraisals have to happen for bank protection, right? So if you are purchasing a home, the lender wants to make sure that the purchase price of the property uh, is the actual cost of the property. Now, it's always good uh, if those appraisals come in a little bit more, which means you have a little bit more equity um, in the house. But appraisals will actually tell you the, the, the true value of the house uh, and whether or not the neighborhood is appreciating or depreciating. And it's just one of those little things that you have to have. Um, the other reason that you have to or you should have a home appraisal is if you're a buyer that's paying cash for property, you have an opportunity to either A, uh, have a home appraisal or purchase without a home appraisal, depending on how you feel about the purchase price. And that would protect your cash assets also, just like protecting the lender. So kind of keep those two things in mind. Uh, it really does set the stage for for you as far as your, your financing or protecting your cash asset. That's kind of the biggest reason to have a, a home appraisal there. Great. Yeah. Um, since, yeah, I guess you could make that step getting a home appraisal. Um, mm -hmm. Second question I have for you. Uh, what are some reasons why my home appraisal may come in low or it comes in low? Okay. Okay. Well, and you know, as we, as we see that with the, the increase of the markets happening, uh, in some cases, um, five, 10 and 50% of the, the actual price, um, sometimes people get into bidding wars and if a bidding war should take place on a particular property. Um, I've seen prices of the houses uh, go upwards of $100,000 just to get that particular property. Now, here's the thing that you, you know, you have to understand. Again, if we go back to the, the first question of why you should get an appraisal is really what is, um, you know, why should you have an appraisal? Because that's going to protect your, that's going to protect your investment on the property. One of the things that you, one of the things that you have to remember, especially if you're going into a bidding war, is that if you are competing with other offers, even if you're the seller, um, the highest and best is not always the best offer. Simply put, you could overbid on a property, say $50,000. And as the seller, that looks good and says, hey, I'm gonna get $50,000 over my asking price. I'm extremely excited about it. Um, however, you have to remember that in the contracts it's written, especially if there's financing, that the financing is going to be contingent upon an appraisal. And if that property doesn't appraise, then that gives the buyer the right to walk away from that property. And that buyer may be putting that, uh, that high offer in there just to kick out everybody else. So again, make sure that you talk to your realtor to understand all the downfalls to the bidding war um, with regards to the, the 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 process of <laughs> with the process of uh, sorry I've totally gone off I've totally gone off what, what was it what was the question JC where, where are we what's the question no you're 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 leading <laughs> right into it no yeah it? you're on it so we were leading right into it um the question was yeah what are some reasons why my home appraisal may come in low come in low right 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 yeah okay. so okay. and you did hit on that with the bidding war um excuse me but um i guess if it does come in low the next kind of thing we were going into with the realtor side of things is how you mentioned speak with the realtor would be you know some options what you can maybe do 
um, which you started to hit on a little bit. Just so like if my appraisal comes in low, uh, lower than my purchase price, what what are some of my options? Right. And, and, and sorry about that. It's again, as everybody knows, I like to, I could rant on, on different topics and I'm trying to stay on topic. Uh, but if, if it comes in, if it comes in low, right. <clears throat> uh, one of the, a couple other reasons. Um, and again, I'm kind of, I'm looking at it at both the buyer and seller side, which sometimes makes it a little bit difficult to explain, uh, with regards to where you should be on this. But, um, you know, it's the job of, of the listing agent to defend the price. It's the job of the buyer's agent to make sure that their buyer gets the best price for the property. Uh, and a couple other reasons that it may come in low. Um, it may be bad timing. The market may have taken a dip. Um, you may have had a, and, and, and I'm not saying this for everybody, but you may have had a bad appraiser, uh, somebody that, that takes an appraisal that comes in from out of your market area. Uh, in some cases, I've seen them come in from different cities and they don't know the area. Whereas one house on the block could go for 500,000, the next house on the block could go for 150 and they don't understand the nuances um, of that particular block. So you can get some, some varying results uh, with regards to a, a low appraisal. Now, as a listing agent, the listing agent should always be prepared to defend that price uh, of the property to be able to show that price uh, to the appraiser or the comps and explain that. Um, and again, the other thing too on low appraisal, it might be in an area that's not been developed and there are no comps available uh, to show. One of the things that we look for as agents is we look for properties uh, like properties. So you're not going to pair a quad level or a tri level to a ranch or, or um, a condominium. You've got to compare like properties as well as we have to look at the timeline for the sales. So a lot of times what we look at is we look for within a half mile and uh, within about a six month sale. And if we can't find anything, then what we'll do is we'll, we'll move those out until we find the comparables um, that will meet that criteria. Now, if your appraisal does come in low, you know, how are you protected as the buyer? How are you protected? Um, well, as the buyer, again, in the contract, you have the right to remove yourself from that contract if the house doesn't appraise, but that's not always the best, uh, that's not always the best case scenario. Um, sellers want to sell and buyers want to buy. A lot of times what we end up seeing is that the buyer and seller end up coming to the table and splitting the cost. So it, let's say, for example, if your appraisal, uh, comes in, you know, say $10,000, um, above. Uh, or $10,000, excuse me, below market value. Uh, and you've got a, you know, you've got a property on the market for, for $250,000. And that's the contract price agreed to by the buyer and seller. Well, and the appraisal saying 240. Well, obviously the listing agent needs to go ahead and defend uh, that with the appraiser. Uh, you can ask for a reappraisal. Uh, you can come in and negotiate with that uh, seller. Maybe you'll split the cost of the difference. Um, and come to the, the table in the middle, um, or as a buyer, if you truly want that house, you might be able to bring that cash to closing. But remember this, uh, that the bank is not going to loan on a property that uh, doesn't support the value of the contract. So, you know, both the seller and the buyer have, have time, money, uh, emotions tied up in the purchase of this property and everybody wants to get to the table. So there's got to be able to be a win-win situation for both parties. If you think about it and you work hard enough, uh, you could come to a meeting of the minds. But again, as the buyer, you are protected under contract law that you do have the right to remove yourself from the contract. The seller doesn't have to sell it for the lower price and can put it back on the market if they choose to do so. So again, you want to look at all your options uh, with, with, getting, with getting into the house or in the case of selling the house. So just kind of in recap, the uh, the home appraisal obviously is important because it sets the price standard uh, for the house and it protects the bank and it protects protects your cash cash ax, ax. it protects your cash assets. Whew. Didn't want to say that one too too wrong. Uh, then uh, what happens if it comes in? <clears throat> why why would it come in low? It may come in low for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, we just see prices, uh, appreciating at, at an astronomical rate in some parts of the country. And, uh, those areas just haven't caught up with other areas. I, again, you know, it's going back to protecting your assets uh, in the property. And then, uh, third, uh, what are your rights when a, uh, an appraisal does come in low? Again, if you're the buyer, you have the right to remove yourself from the property. Seller doesn't have to sell it. 
But for the most part, I've seen that the buyer and seller have been able to work out a uh, a win-win situation where they can get to the table, the seller can sell and the buyer can buy. Again, that's what your agents are for. We're here to, uh, to help you negotiate with those deals. So I know I rambled a little bit, uh, JC, but uh, did we did we hit those questions pretty good? Can you think of anything else at the moment that uh, that may have been brought to the forefront? Uh, I mean, no, you answered all three questions I had. I, I know we were kind of joking around about um, some of the other online appraisal tools. I don't know if you want well, to hit on that at all, but yeah, you know, okay. So we talked a little bit about, uh, about Zestimates and you know, what's the difference between a Zestimate and a real appraisal? Well, a Zestimate is just a computerized, um, it's just a computerized estimate of your home based on other values. And it doesn't necessarily pull in like we talked about like properties. So it might be comparing the square footage of a large condo to a ranch. And uh, that's a lot different. And a lot of times we find in the Zestimates uh, that they tend to be off um, in, in most parts significantly because they're not familiar with the area. Just like we talked about, maybe you've got an appraiser that comes in that's, uh, uh, that's coming in from another city and doesn't necessarily understand the nuances uh, that the agent or the local expert would. So anything that you get offline, just kind of take it with a grain of salt. But one of the things that, that I would also recommend, and I'll, I'll put a link down below uh, if you're interested in a home evaluation, you know, we do those and we use computerized tools as well. Um, I, I utilize those, but again, you know, that's just from a quick model on anything that you get online. You're always going to want to talk to your agent with regards to, you know, give me the specific breakdown on how we came to this price. Okay. And you know, what I find is that uh, it's nice to have the, the now mentality, uh, sort of the Amazon, I order it today, I get it today. Um, type situation. But uh, if you ask somebody to professionally break down that price point for you, uh, you're going to get a lot better results and you're going to get a clear understanding of what the marketplace could actually bring for your property if you're looking to sell. Or as a uh, as a buyer, um, you kind of want to know where you stand, uh, you know, with your offer. If you're looking to offer, you know, $10,000 less, is it really a $10,000 less house? Or is it just something that um, you know? Maybe you need to increase your budget. So hopefully that kind of touches a little bit on the automatic appraisals. Um, again, always talk to your local professional with regards to that. So JC, do you have any uh, any questions or um, with that with uh, with regards to the the online appraisal? Cool. No, I mean everything got answered today, and um, okay. I definitely appreciate it. And we we do appreciate it. Obviously, uh, same thing. We we um, try to cover everything. And if you have any questions, I know you want people to direct them to you. So absolutely. Um, topics, absolutely. any suggestions? So yeah, you know, and everybody here at, uh, you know, over here at Amped Realty, we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, look at every situation. Again, we understand that real estate is more about life than it is about business and you have a busy life and we want to make sure that we take the burden off of you. So if you happen to know anybody that's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, please don't keep us a secret. Uh, give me a buzz. You can reach out to me at Todd at Amped, A-M-P-E-D, Realty.com, or my direct cell phone is area code 502-220-HOME or 220-4663. And uh, we're always glad to chat and always happy to help. But uh, appreciate you stopping by and I look forward to our next talks with Todd on Tuesday.